Finally, Retropalooza has come to Houston. All right, so if you guys didn't know, we started a video game convention called Retropalooza three years ago, and we are expanding this year. We are going into the Houston area. They come from there, a place called Houston. And we will go there too, to rule. Finally, to rule. I was very excited to be going to my first video game convention. However, I left Albuquerque much later in the day than I should have and didn't take into account bad weather and traffic. I wound up being on the road for over 15 hours. I just took a straight shot all the way from Albuquerque to the Houston area and didn't make any stops except for gas food and of course bathroom breaks. It was a pretty brutal drive. Well, I finally made it. Those are my trip totals. Finally made it out to Houston. So this is Planet Houston. Planet fucking Houston. Who else is seeing this? Ah, uh, well, with this satellite link up, uh, just about everybody. I mean, the whole planet. The whole planet Houston? Put some respect on it. Put some respect on it. It's your standard room, the quality in. Except for this shit, man. Look how small this fucking pillow is compared to my hand. It's like a half a fucking pillow. What kind of shit is this? Ah, oh, got in after 4.30. It's like five something now. I'm gonna try to knock out for about an hour, hour and a half, and get my ass up and going. I don't know if you guys can hear this or not, but cold water, hot water. Sounds like the sink is gonna take a shit on me. Quality all the way. All right, so we got the shitty sink, and then you come down underneath the sink, and. You got somebody's dirty ass drawers under the sink. Awesome hotel. Yeah, I woke up late. It's like, what time is it? 8.36. Supposed to be up at 7.30-ish. Tired down there. Uh, got my requisite game, change this t-shirt, about to throw that on. You know what I'm saying? Eat my oatmeal. Anyway, let's get the hell out of here and go look at some games and meet some nerds. Nerd! Man, look at this bullshit. Won't well, stop raining. Good lord. Being that this was my first video game convention, I didn't have a whole lot to compare it to, but I was thoroughly impressed. As far as merchandise is concerned, there was more than enough stuff there to give any nerd a boner. There were also a couple of arcade machines and tons of video game consoles set up for free play and a video game tournament with prizes. Further, there was a cosplay contest and needless to say, there were the YouTube celebrities and the panels. Which I suppose wouldn't be complete without 8-Bit Eric licking another man's nipple for games. Did you bite it? <laughs> Man, I bet and pulled. <laughs> After the initial mad dash to make my first purchases, and after bullshitting with folks for a little while, I felt comfortable enough to stick my camera in people's faces while I asked them questions. So, comes up and asks, like, do you have a Hulkster with titties on it? WrestleMania. I'm like, I think I do have one over there, but it didn't have titties on it. I guess, to make it right, we gotta draw them on there. Let's give them some nice biggins. Man, oh, there you go. And if you look, the shadow and that little dimple make it look like a, a mm, <laughs> kind of a sad face. There you go.
So the more I interacted with people, and not just YouTube personalities, the more I realized that the real draw of these conventions is not the games and the merchandise, but meeting the people that have the same passions that I do. And I wondered if it was the same for everybody. So of course, I had to ask. My favorite part about attending video game conventions is, is the interaction of, of actually seeing the people that love the games, that are involved in the scene, the community, uh, meeting people that enjoy your work, and you actually see the smiles on their face. You're like, oh, you don't see the, the faces of the people uh, when you're making videos and doing podcasts, going online. You just see comments, you see tweets, but you don't actually see the people. Um, and so that actually makes it worthwhile. And I said, oh wow, I'm actually having some sort of difference in making people at least a little bit happy for a part of the day. Honestly, my favorite part is uh, trying to get games that I can't find elsewhere. My side of town, game stores suck, flea markets suck, uh, and then also hanging out with friends, that's a big part. Uh, not getting any sleep is another favorite part. Um, and Retropalooza in general, just because my friends run it, and I think everybody that's involved is good people. So I, I really like Retropalooza a lot as far as conventions go. My favorite part of attending video game conventions is the camaraderie. I mean, you can go to different places to buy games. You can get on eBay and Amazon and buy games. But video game conventions are much more than that. I see friends. I see people I haven't seen in a long time. I, a lot of the people I see at these conventions are, are ones that I see at every convention. It's almost like a family reunion. You, know, you get together, you talk, you play in the tournaments, you attend panels. But just you know, hanging out with your friends and seeing everybody is even better than the actual games themselves. Just, but of course, it's also nice to find some rarities you've been looking for. So, I guess my ultimate favorite is just hanging out with friends and, and so you know, uh, people I barely know, people I just know through online. You know, it's cool to see them. I might have a Facebook friend that I don't really know all that well, but then I see them at a convention face to face, and it's just awesome uh, catching up with everybody that way. So as you guys saw in the video, I got to meet a lot of YouTube celebrities, a lot of guys that I've been watching on YouTube for years, and uh, folks that I occasionally shoot the shit with on Facebook. Really, that's the main reason why I wanted to go. I mean, there's no reason to drive like 15 and a half, 16 hours, and over a thousand miles unless you're going to go for the experience, and that's exactly why I wanted to go. Um, it's a convention, so you're not going to find a whole lot of deals unless you're, you know, kind of buddy buddy with a lot of the vendors, and I wasn't. So I got some decent deals here and there, but more than likely you're going to pay retail prices. But again, it was, it was all about meeting these people and just talking to like-minded folks and people who shared a passion for the hobby like I did. So all the guys that I met were very nice, very genuine, uh, very polite. Um, I don't know why a lot of them get so much hate online, um, but everybody was real cool. Like I, I didn't meet anybody that I felt was a douche or being insincere. And that was very refreshing. And attending Retro Palooza really gave me the convention bug. I really want to go and attend a few more conventions before I move to Japan this fall. I don't know how likely that is, but it's something I'm going to work on trying to do. So anyway, uh, let's get into the stuff that I picked up. The first purchase that I made, as you saw in the video, was this copy of WrestleMania for the NES with titties drawn on the Hulkster, uh, thanks to Scott, aka Scott Squash. And I really appreciate him doing that for me, if you don't know what that's about. I can't talk to people about it. Very cool, real genuine dude. I really enjoy talking to him, and I appreciate him doing that for me. So my goal the first day was basically just to fill as many gaps in my NES collection as possible and pick up any other little things here and there that I wanted to get. Um, and I did that pretty quickly. Uh, once the doors opened, all the good stuff pretty much went within the first hour or two, to be honest with you. So being that as it was, my secondary goal was to talk to as many people that I was familiar with from YouTube and attend as many of the panels as I possibly could. Uh, some of the panels were pretty bad to be honest with you, but uh, Pat the NES Punk put on a really good panel. So did the, uh, Norm the Gaming Historian and uh, Scott Swatch. He and, uh, and Wood had a really fun, energetic panel and I really enjoyed that, so definitely worth the time. But uh, anyway, what we all want to see is the games. Uh, I'll be honest with you, there are no like real gems in here. It's just filler titles for the most part. A couple good ones that I was really excited to get. I don't know how excited anybody else is going to be about it. But uh, Second, I got a couple Genesis games that I've been looking for for a while. I got a complete copy of Beavis and Butthead for the Sega Genesis. I did have the cart only. I've had it for quite a while, but 
haven't been able to find the boxing manual at a price that I was willing to pay and 10 bucks, I'll take it. Another one that I was really excited to get was Midnight Resistance for the Sega Genesis. And this one is missing the manual, but at $10, I wasn't gonna walk away from that. It's been, it's been really difficult to try to find this game uh, at a price that I felt was reasonable. Um, it, it's getting kind of pricey now. I can probably find the manual somewhere down the line. Uh, and if you don't know, this I believe is a spiritual successor to Heavy Barrel for the NES, which is one of my favorite games for the system as a kid. I used to play that with my dad all the time. So there's a lot of sentimental value with that, and I've never played this one. I definitely want to. So when I get time, I'll definitely be popping that in the system. A couple games that I got from CJ of Machine Games Texas were Xanak for the NES, which I didn't have, obviously. Bartman meets Radioactive Man, and this game, eh, it's a little, it's a little yellowed. The card, um, the label, I never ever see this with a good label, so I don't know what's going on there. But uh, I don't remember what I paid for him, but I know he hooked me up on these, so I do appreciate that. I don't remember who I got these from, but I know I didn't pay the sticker price. I want to say I got like two bucks off, which isn't a whole lot. Um, Gremlins 2 for the NES. And you'll see the price on that was 12 and Journey to Silius. And I kind of regret not getting a complete copy of that for, I think it was 50 from CJ. Um, but I had already bought this the day before, so I was like, eh. But anyway, prices aren't exactly deals, but the whole experience is just to, to go and have fun. And I wasn't really worried about the money at the time. So I don't remember the guy's name who I bought these from, but he gave me a bulk deal on these. I didn't pay the sticker price. He gave me a fair amount off, so I didn't really have a problem from what I paid for him. But these, and none of these are rare, a lot of uncommons. Um, games that I just don't, I mean, not all uncommons, but I don't see them ever. So, we got Flight of the Intruder for the NES. We've got Roller Blade Racing. Clash at Demon Head. One that I'm really shocked that I don't see because I know this is a common as hell game and I used to see it all the time when I didn't give sh two shits about collecting for NES. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Defenders of Dinatron City. Clash Ball. Sesame Street Countdown. Silkworm. Kabuki Quantum Fighter Genghis Khan Videomation Legendary Wings Another common, well I thought it was a common title but I just don't see it out here uh, Mechanized Attack Rally Bike Prince of Persia and Supercars. So with those, I believe I'm somewhere around 550 or 560 total on my uh, licensed NES set. So that was all those games were a huge boost. I've been sick. I've been sitting somewhere at like 530 for a while, like a long while. Uh, I don't really do the the eBay thing very often anymore, and I just I rather find the games in person. So happy to get those. Also, I had the pleasure of talking with Brett Weiss, and I bought his latest book, The 100 Greatest Console Video Games, 1977 through 87. Really interesting book. And uh, when I walked by his table, I didn't it didn't even really hit me that that he was the guy that I had several books from. I um, I saw this book and I saw several others that I actually had on my Kindle for quite a while. And uh, I, I stopped and I talked to him about collecting and just writing in general. And he was a really, really nice dude. Uh, and he was nice enough to actually go ahead and sign this for me. Um, really cool dude. I'm going to leave some pictures up here of some of the other books that he's written. But um, now I, I don't mean it's, it's definitely not an insult at all, but they're good shitter books, good books to read in short bursts. Um, He's got a few books that he's written, uh, and this is pretty much the same sort of concept, where he kind of overviews a bunch of games for a specific console generation. 
uh, and gives a very very short review and uh, maybe sometimes a little bit of history on all the games from each console uh, you know which is really really cool it's very um, very informative so if you're in a video game history and whatnot they're definitely good books to check out he also does a podcast and I'll go ahead and leave that link somewhere down there um, I also got to play the gosh what the hell did he call it the play the punk challenge I think where um, Pat the NES punk at his panel he selected a few people to play uh, video games competitively and the winner got a copy, a digital copy of his latest book, and the loser got a shit game. So we played, uh, what was it, Joust, <laughs> and that was awful. Got kicked my ass. So I got a copy of Horses for the Nintendo DS. A real winner there, but it's very cool that he actually gave that to me. So another dude, I mean, real genuine dude, real cool guy. Uh, so that was all I picked up for the first day. So the second day, I actually wound up having another conversation with Pat, and. Um, I wound up picking up a, co a digital copy of his book, which is actually pretty uh, pretty decent. Um, again, it's kind of in line with, with the uh, Brett Weiss books, and Brett Weiss actually did some guest uh, reviews for that book. Very interesting stuff. I have a very similar perspective on a lot of things as Pat, so reading his book, um, it just it resonates with me. I enjoy it. So if you get a chance to pick that up, I would highly recommend that. Um, one thing that I really regret getting, or not getting, excuse me, was a copy of Tempo for the 32X. It was a complete copy in very good condition, 30 bucks. Should have picked that up, I didn't. It was gone the second day. The, the vendor was actually not there the second day. So uh, that was pretty much the only thing that I regret not getting. Uh, a couple of just random games that I got just for the hell of it. Uh, the second system that I do want to complete eventually, it's not really priority to me, but uh, it's the Sega Master System. So I got a complete copy of Pro Wrestling for the Master System. And that was six bucks and these were three each a uh, copy of kingdom of paradise for the psp don't know anything about these but they look interesting and the con for the psp so that was all i got from the convention again um pretty expensive I, I spent quite a bit of money but it was all about the experience and i had a really really good time i would definitely attend that convention again if i could next year or years down the line whenever i'm going to be available to do that uh but yeah it was a great experience loved it wish i had gotten more footage asked more questions uh most of my b-roll came out really blurry and shitty so i didn't even bother to use it so this video is not quite as good as i want it to be and quite honestly when i went down there i didn't really think too much about doing a video or a decent video so I didn't really I didn't capitalize on my opportunity to talk to these guys like I should have but lesson learned for next time so I'm actually gonna roll into my Friday night dick ups video for the stuff that I got today from garage sales and from a buddy of mine who is getting out of collecting so you see me wearing the same clothes I'm not being a stinky filthy bum I'm just filming two videos on the same day so watch out for that so as time goes by I'm learning how to use this camera a little bit more. I'm mean, learning how to use my head a little bit more as far as actually making the videos and making them a little bit better and not so uh, painful to watch because <laughs> there are some folks that make some really painful videos and I don't sit through them. So Anyway, um, I appreciate anybody who actually sat around and watched this. Uh, stick around for the Dick Ups video. Oh shit, and how can I not mention the fact that I'm over 100 subs now. I was like at 135 I think the last time I looked. Uh, prior to looking at that I had like 90 so I don't know where that boost came from but whoever was shouting me out I really appreciate it um, probably mr. Dude 206 really cool guy really appreciate all the help he's giving me but I appreciate the views and I appreciate the subs always appreciate the comments thanks for watching catch you next time